What's up guys, it's Jeff Ray, featured guest host here with Weld.com. On today's episode, we're gonna be welding chromoly tubing for beginners. We're gonna talk about chromoly tubing, as well as we got a couple of pieces here we're gonna prep and weld out for you today. So, let's get at it. We're going to be getting into what chromoly tubing is, where do we use this material, and what applications it's used for. But before then, we're going to tell you a little bit about chromoly tubing. Today we're going to be welding on some 4130 chromoly tubing. 4130 chromoly is a chrome alloy steel with a low carbon content. It has around 0.25% molybdenum content for strength. The word chromoly comes from the combination of chromium and molybdenum, the two major alloys that make up this material. The 30 and 4130 designates the grade number and has about a 0.3% carbon by weight. Chromoly is a steel alloy that is stronger than regular steel. It is mostly used in bike manufacturing, roll cages, race car chassis, and also in aviation. Due to its strength, you're able to minimize the tubing wall thickness that gives you a lighter base material rather than regular mild steel. Unlike the other materials, chromoly is the most cost effective while still maximizing the strength at the same time. When welding on chromoly, anything under 120 thousandths doesn't necessarily need to be preheated. Anything thicker than that should be preheated between three to 400 degrees before welding. The most commonly used filler when welding chromoly would be ER80SD2, but you can also use ER70S2 and ER70S6 as an alternative. They're also acceptable. As a reminder, to never rapidly cool a weld by dunking it in water. Always allow the weld to cool slowly to prevent cracking. We're trying to maximize the strength of the material as well as the weld, so we don't want any cracking. With that being said, we got a couple of drop pieces of some 4130 chromoly tubing here that we're gonna be welding on. So I'm gonna go ahead, get these things cleaned and prepped, and we'll get them welded. Let's get at it. We got our scrap pieces of 4130 chromoly tube prep. This is some inch and 5 eighths 083 wall 4130 chromoly tubing. I got this piece that's gonna go on the end here. It's not perfectly perpendicular or nothing. We didn't try to make these. These were just cuts that I had laying around we cleaned up. Then we'll put that, that one there. So if there's anything else you guys would like to see us do with the chromoly tubing, different copes, different fits, stuff like that, let us know in the comments but down below. But we're gonna go ahead, get the machine turned on, get this stuff tacked together, make a couple of welds. So let's get at it. We're ready to get this stuff tacked. We're gonna go ahead, get the bottle turned on. We're gonna use 100% straight argon. If you notice, whenever I open my bottle of argon, I always stand off the side of the regulator to ensure that, say, you didn't tighten this thing down you just threw it on here and didn't grab a wrench. You turn that on, the pressure of that bottle could possibly blast that regulator off and whack you right in the chest. So always stand off to the side when turning on the bottle. We're gonna get the machine turned on. We're gonna utilize the Everlast Power TIG 210 EXT. It's on 45 amps. We'll turn it up to, we'll start with 90. That should be good. We're running DC negative, but high freak TIG start with the foot pedal. So let's go ahead and get this stuff tacked together. Get a couple of welds made. We're ready to tack this stuff now. I'm gonna be utilizing some ER70S2 1 16th wire. I've got the Furic MK14 cup with some E3 332 tungsten. I'm ready to tack these things up. I'm gonna grab the first one here with a piece of tape. Just make it a little easier. Put the fit there. Just helps when you're by yourself to have something to hold your fit. 
So let's get this thing tacked off a couple of spots. Got this thing tacked now. I want to talk about the tacking of it a little bit. When welding it, it kind of welds like carbon steel does, but say when you're welding carbon steel, you make a tack, you can hit the piece and manipulate it some. With the chrome molly, it does not have that give. The tacks are just gonna break. The material is strong, tensile strength, strong. So that that tack is strong, but it's very fragile at the same time. So if I try to hit it to move that piece, it's just gonna crack. As well as gas coverage. You see, I got the big cup on here. I want a lot of gas coverage, long post flow. We don't wanna cook this stuff either. So we're ready to get into it. Got both welds made, they went great. I had a little gust of wind blow by, maybe a spot of porosity in there somewhere, but like I said, I'm using a big cup. I want a lot of gas coverage. Gas coverage is a big thing with this stuff. It welds a lot like carbon steel, but I enjoy welding this stuff a lot more. I do enjoy welding carbon steel, but I love welding chromoly. The fit up on this stuff can make your weld easier or harder on you. Because this is thinner walled tubing, it makes for having a good fit up to have a good weld. So always try to have the best fit you can to ensure you have the best weld you can. Especially when you're going for strength, we want good fits to have the strongest weld possible. Now, my tungsten direction, I'm gonna be pushing the puddle as this is molten steel. So it's gonna flow, it'll have a direction of flow per se. And when I get around the curve here, if I don't turn the head just right, the puddle might favor one side or the other. That's just something I've found out from welding this stuff. Just doing this stuff more and more, you know, if it's not something you do all the time, practice, practice, practice. And that's how you're gonna get more proficient at welding this type of stuff, as well as fabricating and fitting this stuff up. So a lot of the times when welding this stuff, it's chassis work or, you know, bicycle frames, stuff like that, where one piece of pipe is gonna intersect from one piece to another. So essentially, it'll be closed off. And when I go to weld that piece, the oxygen inside of it is gonna start to expand when it heats up. And it'll start to actually blow out in the fit of your weld. And you can't really seal that weld up because that oxygen inside is expanding and pushing out of there. Creates a lot of porosity and it's a mess. So whenever you do do chassis work and stuff like that, you'll drill a hole at the intersect point. That way it allows the air inside of it to pass out 
and not expand and have a cavity in there where it's gonna blow your weld out of that, that joint there and create a bad weld. So that's one of the major things I've noticed when working with this stuff because it is a big problem with it in chassis work. That's the type of stuff you're gonna encounter. Thanks for watching. Until next time, you can head over to weld.com and get connected with us directly through the member section, as well as you can head over to the members forum where you can ask questions and our advisors will gladly help you. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.